right, I'm going to go start with the code of values. Faith, our creator put us on earth to succeed, so while we strive to learn and stretch ourselves in order to reach our full potential, everything that happens to us happens for a reason greater than us. Therefore, we welcome all experiences, knowing that greater success lies ahead in them. Integrity, we do the right thing each and every time. We treat each other fairly, respectfully, and honestly. Respect, as professionals, we always pay attention to our image and look, act, and speak professionally. Treat other people like we would like them to treat us. Service, we exceed our clients' expectations on every service call and at every interaction. Focus on serving our clients and educating them with options first and profits follow. Teamwork, we know there's power in teamwork and we always work together and help each other accomplish our goals. Each of us is unique in different ways and we need each other to succeed and we'll have fun in the process. Okay, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the roll call today. So Juan here. I'm here. Corey. Yes, I'm here. Sal. Yeah, good morning, John. I'm here. Tony. Here. Good morning, John. Uh, Greg Bray. Jeff from the area south. Good morning, John. I'm here. Got Mike from LA North. I'm here, John. Mike Toki from Phoenix. Good morning, John. Got Matt, Matthew McCall from uh, LA. I'm here, John. We have Kelly from LA North. Kelly, LA North here. Jim from Phoenix. Morning, John. The message I have today, guys, is you know I want to talk about ambition and a couple of different types of ambition. The meaning of ambition: a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. And I want to highlight the determination and hard work and strong desire. So, what's ambition? Ambition is somebody that has a really, really strong desire and is determined and is willing to put as much hard work as possible. You know, I just read a book recently called The Shoe Dog. If you guys haven't read that, it's a really good book. It's about the story of Nike and how Phil Knight, this guy that was a runner you know, from Oregon, created this brand called Nike that right now is known for just do it, right? It's known for one of the biggest shoe brands on the planet. I mean, there's nothing bigger than Nike when it comes to shoes. And that was a guy, okay, Phil Knight was a guy that had ambition. I mean, we were lucky to have a guy like Phil Knight to have ambition to bring so, so many great shoes into the market. That to me was a message of a guy that's ambitious. There's a negative side to ambition, okay? What's the negative side to ambition? This thing called selfish ambition. I heard a podcast that I listened to and he was mentioning what selfish ambition means. Let me define selfish, okay? Here's a definition in Webster's. Lacking consideration for others, turned chiefly with one owns personal problems profit or pleasure, not caring about others. So the meaning of selfishness or selfish meaning is not caring about others, primarily concerned about yourself or oneself, not really concerned about what happens to other people. Now there's a positive side to ambition, and I think ambition itself is positive, and I'm going to connect that to salespeople because I think some of the most ambitious people go into sales. You know, So the group that's on this phone, I think there's a lot of ambition going on on this phone. So what's a different side? The other coin of selfishness is collaboration. And what's the meaning of collaboration? Working jointly on an activity, especially to produce or create something bigger. What's collaboration? Working together to create something bigger. Okay, so the aim or objective is for someone to try to achieve something. Ambition is achieving, determined to achieve, willing to work hard. And when you combine that word ambition with collaboration, that means that there's a group of ambitious people working on something greater and bigger. And that's what I believe, okay, we have going on with our teams right now. What's collaboration? Collaboration is we, 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 and selfishness is me, me, me. Okay, that's the way I define it. When somebody's looking at me, 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 I got to win, I got to win. It's all about me. It's all about me. That's selfish. And when you combine that with ambition, okay, me, 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 ambition, that means I will step on anybody to get there. I'm willing to risk whatever the case is to get there. And that's a very destructive, destructive ambition. Here's how selfish ambition works, guys. I win first, everyone else wins later. Everyone else, I have to win. In order for me to win, someone has to lose. That's a selfish ambition thinking. Everyone else wins if there is uh, something left over. Okay, I got to win. And then if there's something left over, it's okay. I got to get a bigger piece of the pie, somebody to get a smaller piece of the pie. My needs before my customers, before my text needs, before my company's needs. Okay, that's selfish ambition. Okay, and I've seen guys, I've seen really good channel leaders that had the me, me, me syndrome, right? That didn't really care about anything, anybody winning but themselves. Their tech, techs left them. Okay, nobody wanted to work with them. It was a really, really destructive situation. So the reason 
I'm bringing this up is because I want you guys to understand that ambition is a good thing. Ambition is a great thing. And I want everybody to be ambitious. Ambition is about creating something bigger, creating more for your family, for yourself, for others around you, leaving a destiny, leaving a mark on earth, a positive mark, making a difference. However, when you connect that with selfish ambition, it's about destruction. It's about cheating. It's about making things worse for other people for you to succeed. I want to be able to tell the difference between these for you guys to see the difference because I want to make sure that our team, guys, is a team full of collaborative, ambitious people because that's what we need. We need collaboration. You know, this is what I also see in, in selfish ambition with teams. Selfish ambition in companies or teams is about, hey, you know what? I want a bigger piece of the pie. I want to be the only guy selling. I want to be the only guy doing it out there because I'm concerned about making more money. And look, every company, every division you guys work for has a break-even number. And that break-even number, guys, is way higher than what you're possibly able to do yourself. It's much higher. In some of our divisions, we got to do seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a month to just break even. In some divisions, it's a little less. The overhead, it's like five, six hundred. But in order to achieve those numbers, Numbers, guys, we can't be the only ones, can't have selfish ambition, only be concerned about us. We got to be concerned about the team, about everybody succeeding, our techs winning, our customers winning, our companies winning, we're winning. We got to be all about we, 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 not about me, me, me. And that's what it takes, guys, in order to win as a team. Quick story, I recently met a guy, you know, I, I believe he was a very ambitious person, a very ambitious person, you know, but I think he had more selfish ambition than anything else. You know, I spent quite a bit of time with this person and, you know, I heard a lot of things from public about this person. You know, the word gets out, you know, people talk about people, right? You know, so I knew a lot of people that knew about this person as well. And everything I talked about with other people, you know, led me to believe that the guy was about me, 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 right? He was willing to share and all, all kinds of other things, right? But it was more about, all right, there was always a hidden agenda connected to the guy's communication or whatever the case was, right? Every time he met with, when I met with him, he had an agenda. He had something that he wanted to gain by meeting. It wasn't about just, hey, let's collaborate, let's talk, let's see if we could share with each other and see if somebody could, you know, we could share ideas, somebody could learn and go apply and, and do better, right? So, you know, that word gets around, guys. And that's why I'm talking about we need to be missionaries, not mercenaries. Missionaries, guys. Missionaries have a mission. They have a purpose. They work in collaboration. What do mercenaries do? They work for a check. They work for, you know, whatever they're going to get on Friday. That's all they're concerned about, what I'm going to get on Friday. So how do we become more missionary-like than mercenary-like? And I believe it's looking into ourselves and going, how? asking this question first, how can everybody around me win? How can I create abundance where not only I win, but everybody else around me wins? I want to make a point here. If your heart isn't in the right place, guys, and you become a very good salesperson, it could lead to disaster at the end. So that's why I want all of you to understand the difference between selfish, ambitious salespeople versus collaborative, ambitious salespeople. To me, it's the same as selfish ambition and collaborative ambition. One is about me, me, me. The other one's about we, we, we. Okay, one's about being a missionary. The other one's about being a mercenary. And what are the examples? Here's an example of selfish ambition. As long as I have a check this Friday, I don't care if my techs have one. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to calculate the job. I'm going to sell it. Hey, you know, I sold the, guy, the job for 20 grand. You go figure it out how you're going to make money. And here's a collaborative ambitious channel leader. Let's do the math. So, so we sell it for X amount. And once we do the commissions and all this, this is what's left. You do the math with them. You do the numbers with them, right? And you show them and you tell them, hey, listen, you know, you got to get this job done for X amount. This is what you got to get the job done for in order for, you know, make sure you work on it hard. Okay, make sure you plan it out. Make sure you get everything lined up. And if you have any questions, call me. I want to make sure you make money on the job, right? That's a difference between selfish. It's one of them, you know, I sold the job. You're on your own. Go ahead and figure it out. The other one's like, hey, let's figure it out together. All right, this is what you're going to make at the end of the day.
day. So make sure you keep your chargebacks low. Make sure you do this. In fact, I'm going to call the repipe guy, see how much he's going to do the repipe for. Make sure that, you know, he doesn't overcharge you on this shop. As long as I can make a commission, selfish, ambitious people, as long as I can make a commission, it doesn't matter if the client gets screwed in the process, right? I'll sell something that doesn't need to be sold. This is selfish, ambitious. Client doesn't need to win. Client just needs to write the check. So the client needs to have a great experience. Client needs to win. At the end, the client needs to have something valuable. And we're lucky to be in a product, in a service, guys, that increases the value of the person's investment. Do you guys understand that homeowner, if a homeowner owns a home, okay, and they put money into it, it increases in value. So we're in the, in the type of business that where long-term solutions actually benefit homeowners. But we got to explain that to them. Here's examples of collaborative ambitious people. You know, as long as my tech uh, makes a check, I don't mind selling this job for $500. I know I'm not going to make any money because I got to sell a thousand. Make it. This guy needs to get a check at the end of the week. You know, let's make sure at least we get him a step. We get him. Hey, here's a $400 job, guys. We're not going to get any more than that. You know, at least you got something. Go ahead and get it done. Right? Not leaving the customer with the problem and leaving with zero, you didn't win. Right? Another example is, you know, hey, you know what? We we undersold this job. Okay, well the company's not gonna make money on this job, so let's all take a haircut, guys. We're all gonna take a haircut so we could all win. Customer needs it done, they can't afford it, so we're all gonna take a haircut. You call your operations leader, you guys work it out, and everybody takes a little bit of a hit. Right? And you know the opposite of that is, hey, I, it doesn't matter. I sold the job. I don't care. The guy didn't do it. I've heard this. All right, I did my job. I sold it. It was tech's job to get it done, pay for a profit. It wasn't my job. No, it is your job because we're leaders. It's it's always the guy in the mirror. If our tech messed up, we messed up. That means we didn't prepare him good enough, or we didn't coach him, or we didn't call him to see how it's going. Right. So yeah, I believe selfish, ambitious salespeople, or anyone that comes from you know selfishness, comes from envy. Right. And I'm gonna switch gears. Here's a moment here, guys, and I'm going to go into this thing that I believe is what causes selfish ambitious. Okay? And one side of that spectrum of selfishness is a thing called envy. Envious people, guys, the surest way to be unhappy is to compare yourself with other people. If you want a guaranteed recipe for failure or unhappiness or not being you know, happy and, and grateful for what you have, start comparing what you have with your neighbor. Start comparing what you're doing with somebody else. Start comparing everything start measuring yourself up against somebody else and I will guarantee you you will always find unhappiness at the end of that road let me tell you what this emotion envy does being envy this emotion envy leads into this thing called guilt we start feeling sorry for ourselves like you compare yourself with the Joneses or somebody else right and then you see all the shortcomings you see everything they have that you don't have then you start feeling guilty like victimized almost like why does this have to happen to me why am i always so unlucky why is this why is that and you start comparing it and you start feeling this other emotion called guilt guilt leads into this emotion called anger now you're pissed now you're angry it leads into being angry and then being angry leads into unfairness now you're going man this world is unfair okay i believe in you know why can't everything be equal you know why can't we do this why can't everybody be why can't the government do this for me why can't the company do this for me you know why can't this person do this for me right you start feeling this level of unfairness, which makes you a victim, by the way, when you start looking out and feeling unfair, you become a victim. You almost become, you know, like you have no control, right? That leads into something called depletion, where now, okay, we feel depleted. We're exhausted because of this thought, okay, because of this enviness that led into this feeling of guilt, that led into anger, that led into unfairness. Now we're depleted, right? Now we're depleted. Others have a better advantage over us. Right? The resources of the world are becoming less and less. We have less calls. We have, oh, another channel leader in our team. Shit, that means less work for me. That means I get to go to less calls. Oh, I got a smaller team. Oh, man, that's worse for me. I need a bigger team. I need more people you know, so I could keep moving. And then it leads to this belief for one person to win, the other person needs to lose. All of this enviness goes into the spiral, into the circle that eventually makes a belief system. Okay, this is where the mindset belief system comes in. It's not this word envy that leads into this where the belief is that in order for me to win, others need to win. And the other side of that, guys, which I believe is side of the collaboration, collaborative, ambitious 
envious people, they start with this other emotion that's the opposite of envy, which is called gratitude. What is this word gratitude? Gratitude is this thing that you're grateful for what you have. You look inward, not outward. Envy is looking outward. Selfish people look outward and compare themselves with others. Grateful people look within and compare what they have. They're grateful. They're appreciative of what they have. And let me tell you what spiral that creates. And we talked about the bad, and I call that the dark side. Let's talk about the side that has all the light and the stars and everything. It starts with gratitude. Gratitude leads into creativity. You become more creative. You think about more ways to solve problems. This is what I'm talking about, of grateful people. If there's a break in the action, grateful people don't just sit down and whine. What they do, they just gather up and figure out another creative way they could go out and make money. They knock on doors. They start calling people. They turn every rock. They do whatever they have to do because they understand then I'm going to create my own result. I'm not going to wait around. Start calling back on old estimates, connecting with old clients, whatever the case is. Creativity leads to cooperation. Now there, there's a willingness to work together, combining our creativity with other grateful people and individuals. Then we multiply. Cooperation equals multiplication. Okay, if you cooperate with others, you can actually achieve more. And then that leads to more opportunity for everybody. That leads into abundance. Now it's about let's bake a bigger pie. It's not about my slices getting smaller. It's about creating a bigger, okay, creating a bigger pie. So everybody's slice is getting big. So I wanted to talk about this, guys, because I believe that we need to look at ourselves. We need to be better versions of who we are ourselves. It's good to look and see and communicate and understand while you see other people's numbers and see other people's teams or whatever it is. But when you see that and then you feel depleted or you feel envious, you got to catch yourself, guys. Got to catch it. I got to catch. Listen, I'm, te- I'm talking about this because I need this as much as you do. You know what I'm saying? I need this because sometimes I get the feeling of enviness when I hang out with somebody or when I see something and I'm like, man, I thought I was doing great until so-and-so came along. Now I'm like, I look like a loser next to this guy. But then I catch myself, right? Sometimes a little later than I want to. And I go, hold on a minute, man. I'm going to start jotting down all the things I'm grateful for. I start calling people up and telling them why I appreciate them, okay? And that changes immediately. It changes immediately from, you know, this looking outside and caring. And my belief is, and I want to start, go back to the beginning when we're talking about ambition, we're talking about selfish ambition. I believe that this word selfishness, selfish ambition comes from enviness. Okay, that's where it comes from. And I believe that collaborative ambition comes from gratitude, that I'm willing to work, okay, with other people. I'm willing to share a piece of the pie. I'm willing to look and see what this person's doing and learning from this person and not learning with the sense of not being envious about where they're at, but actually being appreciative, going, man, that's great. How can I learn a couple of nuggets here so I could better my game, okay, so I could actually become better and not comparing. I wanted to share this message because I think it's important. I believe that we, as doing what you guys are doing, you guys are are ambitious people, okay? And sometimes just talking to you guys lights a fire in me, right? Getting on the phone and just discussing and doing all that. And we got to share that ambition through collaboration. Feel free to call each other to ask, hey, what are you doing? You know, what's a nugget I could get from you? What are you doing? Hey, how did you do? so well? How do you do so good with, you know, with your team? How does so-and-so do so well? And learning from each other, right? And then going and applying that and then thinking about how can we create a thing called we, 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 where we all win, where I understand what my manager's goals are and I'm working towards helping him achieve his goals. I want to understand what my customer's goals are. So I ask questions and I find a solution for my customer based on their goals. And then I find out what my technician's goals are and I remind him and I and when he wants to go fishing that day when he hasn't hit his goal, I remind him, hey, you know, you haven't hit your number, so maybe we should work, guys. Maybe we should do this so we could achieve that. So I want to ask you a question, okay? Do you consider yourself being a missionary or a mercenary? And what's the difference? Ron, what's your take on this? I believe that the missionary is that I, I have the bigger vision in mind because when we're focused on something that's bigger than us, right? It can keep the ambition in the proper place. If it's just focused on me, then I can look at the negative things that may be happening around me. So it's knowing that, am I keeping it clean to be able to say that I'm doing the right thing for the right reason? 
John, it's Mike Popeat in Phoenix. I think it starts within the person when they wake up in the morning. For me, I'm always thinking about the branch, the team, the guys. We talked about it all the time, Jim and I. If we're not selling jobs, these guys aren't working. We take it, we put it on our shoulders that we need to get these guys work. I think to have that missionary versus the mercenary starts with options. Because if you go in there with options every time, you're going to show the customer you care. If you don't go in there with options and you're just going in there with the fix that you think needs to be fixed, well, you're not connecting with the customer. So I think it starts within the person. Are they more concerned with what they're going to make, what they're going to do today? Or are they more concerned with how are they going to help their team, their guys, their technicians, their branch succeed? You know, there's a proverb I want to share with everyone. Proverbs 13:11 says, "Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase." My take was this: is the wealth gained by I changed the word dishonesty with selfish ambition will be diminished. He who gathers it with collaborative ambition will increase. And it even comes from the book of Proverbs, you know, talking about, you know, this dishonest game, okay, or this you know, dishonest thinking method or whatever the case is, right? I just wanted to share that. I had written that in my notes, but I highlight a lot of the Proverbs I read. Anybody else want to share kind of their take on, you know, this? I'll share. It's so important on how you deliver a message. I've been working with guys and, and trying to develop them and I may see something that I see that works. It may work for me and I may apply it over and over and get results with it. But just because that so doesn't mean when I deliver that message to them that they're going to receive it in the way that they need it and that they need to apply it to get results. And if they even see those results suitable for them. And it's so important to keep guys and the quality guys that see things to get the results that are needed for the team and coming back here and kind of stepping in having some experience and working with guys that may have a little less experience i kind of want things overnight or or see things that can help overnight but how i come in and approach it is so impactful I, it may it may put me back three steps to building the team that I want uh, to hit the goals that are in front of me. And so personally, I'm reflecting on how I talk to these guys and who I'm being for them. Uh, it don't matter if I can see an approach or, or a way that'll work. It's what they need to see for themselves and how I can help them see it for themselves to get where we need to be. It goes back to, you know, what is a channel leader's job? And it's the three the sides of the pyramid. So it's the leadership, a, it's teaching the team, and then it's about ultimately getting out there and selling too. So those are the three things that we have to look at that we do. We lead, we teach, and we close, we sell. And that's primarily what a channel leader's job is, do all three of those. And how do you do all three of those? Number one, when somebody tells me what leadership, my take on leadership is lead by example. That's the biggest lesson I got about leadership is, hey, don't ask your people to do something you're not willing to because leaders get in the front. Leaders lead from the front and sometimes they lead from the back as well. They're willing to do what it takes and their team see that they're not just thinking about themselves. They're willing, you know, to do. And then the next thing is teaching them. You know, we all need to be spending time with our technicians and teaching them exactly what we know because a lot of us have been technicians before and we know exactly how to win. So if we know how to win because we were winning as technicians, you know, we know how to talk to clients and do certain things. Why wouldn't we share that with our team? Because that's what's going to ultimately create them to be able to start, you know, start teaching yourselves how to what I tell channels and tech technicians, start learning how to overcome objections. Because guess what? It takes the same skill to overcome a $77 objection than it does to come to overcome a $7,000, $17,000 or $70,000 objection. Same exact thing. Someone says, I want to think about it. Same exact thing you need to say for a $77 job than it is for a $70,000 job. So why not start teaching our technicians how to overcome those objections or holding classes with them to, to show them, guys, we need to bring our conversion rates up. We need to start working. This is how we get, get working. This is the questions we start asking. And if you don't know how to do it, and let's say you're not really in tune with it, send them to TNT, all right? We'll teach them how to do it. I appreciate the feedback, uh, Nick. Anybody else uh, have any comments? or? I got one more on the mission. You know, you could preach it, 
But if you're not doing it, it's a whole different. Nobody's going to get the message. And you touched on that because if you're telling the guys to work hard and you don't get there and you want them to, to sway or to divert from the system that we know that works, once you do that, you're sending a mixed message to your technician. So what happens is that I start to confuse them. When I confuse them, I lose them. Right. If I start telling my guys, hey, I'm going to email them a quote, tell them this, tell them that. And you're not there. You just send a mixed message to your guys. Right. You're telling them to talk instead of work. And we're always telling them to work instead of talk. So it's the leader's job to stay consistent in what you do, even even if you're backlogged, even if you're you have other jobs that you're at, it's being consistent with what you're doing is what's going to build consistency with your team, and they're going to develop that way. But if I'm changing my approach with my team all the time, I'm going to lose them because I'm confusing them. So it's important. What are you preaching for this mission? Because if it's a mission that's worthwhile, you're going to be consistent on what you're saying to the people. You're not going to change up your your mission whenever it suits you. It's very important to get a consistent number. You have to be consistent in what you're saying and what your actions are. And the difference between, I think, some leaders is where they could be up one month, down the next month, is that they're inconsistent in what they're saying and what they're doing. It's not matching. So I think that's the key in the mission, be mission-minded, is that you don't change what you're doing. Now, you can get better at what you're doing and how you're communicating and how your skill level gets, but the main mission stays the same. There's a saying, your actions are so loud, I could barely hear you. So believe me, guys, our actions, our kids, our techs, our the people around us, they're seeing they're inputting more with their eyes, okay, than than they could do, than with their ears. And we got to remember that because people, there's a communication with just your eyes. Your eyes will tell you a lot. That's where that comes from is that your actions are so loud, I could barely hear what you're saying. And I connect that to what Ron just said is that be consistent, right? Do the right thing out there. You could expect your text to do the right thing out there. May the roads rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine soft upon your face, and may the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.